Chris, and I saw um, Leo stand up, and I thought, "Whoa, darn, that's a pretty good placebo." You know, how's like? And then he started walking around my clinic, and I thought, "How can that happen?" He neurologically doesn't have effects, and I knew plasticity, neuroplasticity is what had happened, but that quickly, in that age, with that kind of degeneration, with muscle atrophy, even if it's getting a neurological connection, having a hard time getting my head wrapped around that one, but I was watching him. So then I, he left that day, walked out, happy as could be, and I, I just thought, okay, we'll see you know, keep track of, Leo, I want to keep track of you. How long is this lasting? What happened? He came back in three months later. It was on my schedule, and I thought, wow, that's pretty good. I wonder if he's going to wheel back in in the wheelchair. How long did it last? I'll get to find out. He walked in. He goes, no, I was out in my, uh, my machine shop, and I hurt my hip. Get that Russian thing on me. And so it, this kind of medicine, bioenergetic medicine, is the fastest medicine you will see it will be the most miraculous medicine you see, and it's a reminder of how amazing the human body is in remapping and finding a way when it, on mechanical, and in all the things that you're learning in school, you'd say you can't get your head wrapped around it. It's this other system of medicine, this other piece of the body, that bioenergetic frequency vibrational part of the body that is the most amazing and the fastest medicine you will see. And the best medicine. It's a constant reminder to me of, wow, you know, and I think after 10 years of it, I'd be saying, I wouldn't be saying, wow, another miracle, I, but I still use the M word sometimes. It's miraculous. And what's miraculous is the human body. But you're not going to see that with injections. You're not going to see that with just nutrition. You're not going to see that with all the other things. Now, you've got to have the nutrition on board. That is the basic building blocks for the body to use this energy and frequency to make the repair. You've got to do all of our things that we do, but you're not. If you get the right homeopathic remedy, it can be very quick, right? Similar, but tough to get the right remedy, unless you're Stephen Messer very quickly. And as you know, it changes and you're still chasing it. And they're coming in for an hour and a half to two hour intake. I don't have the patience for that. I just don't, it's great medicine, great medicine. But what I have seen is that with these other kinds of vibrational frequency medicines, um, we're, not, we're not having to think so hard. We're letting the body do it. And so that's why I'm excited about it. I wish it was part of the curriculum in the schools. I think it should be. I think it's, a, it's a, um, something that in time it's bypassing us. When I lecture at you know International Conference of Integrative Medicine just two weeks ago in Ohio, all MDs and DOs, I was the only naturopath in the entire thing with hundreds and hundreds of doctors, they didn't know what a naturopath was. Guess what they're interested in? This, and we're not learning it. And it, it, it aggravates me because it fits our tenants better than it fits, fits their tenants. We should be the forefront and the leaders in vibrational frequency medicine. I really believe that. And I hate to think that we're going to be bypassed and some other group is going to take hold of it. And it won't be us. I and mean, here we are being nutritionists again. And I'm not saying that's not beneficial. We all know it. We, but but um, I'm an advocate and, and I've tried. I've tried to get it under critical. I can't, I won't have time to teach it, but so maybe some of you will take that forefront and be there and, and get it in the curriculum at some point and be teaching. Um, it was probably how many years ago? It's probably eight or nine years ago, um, I was working lecturing with Urconia Laser. That's when I was working with Cold Lasers. And I had uh, two lasers donated to the school. That was hard because they were about $30,000 a piece. Had two donated to the school. Um, we trained Dr. Nick, trained you know several people hoping to go forward. And now I understand that you might get a, a little, little bit of cold laser within something. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't know what you're getting right now, if anything. But I'm like, where's the second laser? It should be one in the clinic and one being taught here. So you actually have cold lasers here, and I want to make you aware of that. Mm -hmm. You have some expensive, great technologies right here. I don't consider it necessarily the leading that we're <coughs> taught right now, you know, as far as speed, the things that I'm talking about, but you have some great technologies. And so maybe um, if you're interested, you start pushing the boat a little bit and saying we want to learn more about this, this, this at least the cold laser because that's a good basis to understand frequency.
um, I am willing, and that's why when Stefan approached me, the Naturopathic Society approached me to say, would you be willing to do a, a weekend? I'm like, which weekend, when? And that was a long time ago. We were trying to come up with some dates. I'm trying to get back. I want to get you guys excited about it and understand basics of it and know the power of this kind of medicine. So um, hopefully we'll be able to fill that uh, class well enough. If not, we'll postpone it till we do have a big enough group. I've got too much on my plate to, to do, you know, just a smaller group. But we're going to make it work. So, um, you know, if there's a few of you, enough of you that are interested, I will be willing to come and do that. We'll do some hands-on training. We'll do um, really in-depth lecturing of frequency, of vibrational. So, you know, and whether it happens this weekend or not, I'm not tied to it. So I know Stefan and I talked to it, and we'll talk about it. But I've got it will be hard for me to come if we don't if we don't fill the fill the boat. And I know you guys are trust me. I know I remember you just and how much time do you have to try to put stuff together? And I appreciate all that you've done. We'll see okay. whether it's going to be this weekend or next. We'll see. But um, I'm excited. I do want to do it, and I want to um, let you understand the vibrational body, the frequency medicine part of the body and how it works. We know a lot, and the science is there. The science is there. We have the, I have a PowerPoint presentations of, I've given 12 hour lectures before. 12 hours of material. Didactic, not hands on. So I have the science, the references are there, and it is amazing. And the Nobel laureates and the people who are winning, if you get Scientific American, which is my favorite magazine, and you read that, who, guess where all the, the interest is in medicine? It's in this area right here, and that's where the physicists are there and all, and they're kind of talking to medicine, but medicine's not quite sure what to do with it, but we would know what to do with it. So I think as nature passed, uh, we really, I'd love to see um, us take a, a, a lot a bigger stand in this system of medicine because it is the wave of the future of the medicine as Stefan was saying, it is here, it is coming, and it will be there. Depends on do we want to be part of it or not. And I can't imagine us not being a big piece of it because we understand why you need the nutrition along with it and why you need the emotional, mental piece along with it. And to allow the body to make those amazing changes that can happen very, very fast. And so our bag of medicine that we've got is the perfect fit for all of this. Um, but um, I want to I want to open it up. I'll, I don't want to get into too, too much detail. I know you're in school and you got to get back and all that. But I want to open up some questions too. If you have specific questions on specific technologies or things that are out there that you're interested in that um, I've run into, probably if it has with something to do with frequency vibration, I'll be able to tell you about it. Whether it's Reiki or those things, what I know about it, what we don't know about it, um, what we have science for, what we don't. Um, I just want to get you excited and understanding that, um, um, that this is where it's at. And I know that I'm talking to the ones that are here that are interested in this. So um, any questions? If not, I can keep talking. i got lots to talk about. But. Do, you, um, do you teach C CME classes? And also, what percentage of your practice now is energetic medicine based? Is it sustainable? Yeah, I do sense? continuing a lot of continuing medical education. I'm almost, it gets to the point different times of year, every single weekend I'm traveling somewhere for continuing medical education. And the popular topic is, now I'll do it for nutrition companies, you know, for Soroyal, Transdermal, I just did one for Soroyal, you know, for, uh, for uh, nutrition. Uh, there are groups that still want to learn that, and that's great. I'll bring the science and let them know that, but that to me is not the exciting piece. I do a lot, and the majority of my CME right now is in frequency medicine because that is what they want to learn about. They know nothing about it, and they want to know about it, and they want to know the science behind it. So it's a big piece. And it's rare for me, um, if someone comes into pain, in pain, I know I'm going to be using frequency medicine. 100% of those patients. If they come in and their autonomic nervous system is off, if their parasympathetic sympathetic is off, I know I'm going to be using that to balance them because once they feel it right there in that moment, they have hope. They go, oh, wow, I feel like I'm back inside my body again. So I use it with emotional, I use it with aesthetic medicine. Um, um, I'm one that, you know, I, don't, I, I refer to my colleagues that do Botox if my patients are absolutely set on that. I said at least get somebody who's good at it. But when they ask my opinion, I'm not for using a neurotoxin. 
um, in the brain area. That's just my intake, and I've learned to use my intuition. I'm not willing to do that because I don't feel good about it um, from many different perspectives, so I'm not willing to do it in my practice. Um, so I, my patients are saying, what do you have that's natural? What do you, you know, what, what can you do? I want to fight this aging thing, but I don't want to do it with toxins and this and that. So that's what, and studying in France and Italy brought me back into the aesthetic portion of it. So uh, between the aesthetics and the pain, uh, a large portion of my practice right now uses frequency medicine. Some people come in, uh, they come in because they think they want prolotherapy, and I'm going to get prolo. And it's great. They come in, and they've had prolo before, and it's helped them, uh, but they're back. You know, from another practitioner went in the back, and they say, oh, I need some more prolo. And they're going, hmm, need more prolo. Unless they're an athlete, and they're continually spraining and straining that ligament again. And how long are we are we lasting with this? So I have, um, unfortunately, um, and fortunately, uh, for the patients, uh, many times the patients that are coming in for the regenerative injections, they've heard that that's an area that I am an expert in. Uh, they come in and I'm talking them out of it and I'm getting them on the biomodulator without needles and I'm getting the effects and they love it. So I'm getting where I'm talking a lot of patients out of needles and into frequency medicine. Um, so uh, it's been coming more and more. Um, there is a point in time if they've got a loose ligament and I, it's very, very loose and I've got laxicity, then I am still doing my prolo. I am still doing that. That is a, in, a, an inflammatory process. Can I get there without the injection? Yes, I've done it with the, uh, with the frequency medicines. It can do it. It takes longer. So if I have to do 12 sessions or I've got a patient that's an athlete, I know they need a biomodulator. I write them a prescription. They buy the biomodulator and I teach them what they need to be doing on a consistent basis. Yeah. Okay. So yes. What is a typical day for you at your clinic? Um, I'm only seeing patients three days a week because I do so much lecturing and I do research. I've got a research um, double blind placebo controlled study going right now with 80 patients with Vitalzyme. Um, so I do uh, research and that takes a lot of my time. I do all this lecturing and I've got a lot of other projects. So three days a week with patients. I'm walking in and every day is different and I love that. I don't want to just see pain patients, don't want to just see aesthetics. I see cancer, I see heart disease, I see everything. So when people say, what are you specialize in? I say in health. I'm a naturopath. I see whatever walks in the door. And when they call my, they off at my office and say, well I've got rheumatoid arthritis, what's her protocol? My staff is trained to say she doesn't have a protocol. They don't believe in protocol medicine. It's individualized medicine. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, I might treat you completely different than this rheumatoid arthritis patient. So every day is different. Every day is exciting. I don't know what's going to be there. And I look on the schedule, and I've got what they're coming in for. So if it's some rare genetic disorder, I'm quickly going to look that one up. So it look, And they're impressed that I even did it. They don't expect me to know it because none of the other doctors they've been to do. But they, they, you know, they like that. So I see everything. I always treat emotionally and spiritually as well. Um, I have found that if you don't go to those areas with your patients, you can only get so far. You can get them a great way, and they'll be doing great, but if you want a 100% turnaround in your patients, you've got to talk to them about their emotional and whether they have a spiritual connection. I'm not trying to teach them some kind of my spiritual practice or anything like that. I'm just asking if they have one. If they don't, I'm encouraging them to find something that they can connect with. So I do um, probably... 80% consultation, 80% consultation, 20% is hands-on now. And it's better medicine. I used to be opposite. I was 80% hands-on, very little consultation, but I found my best medicine is working right here and right here with my patients. Yeah. Um, is there a reason you use the tenant biomodulator rather than frequency-specific microcurrent? Um, microcurrent does not have biofeedback in it. <coughs> some it of does it not does. some yes, but show me the science and show me the research where they've done it. They don't. To date there's not a machine that can show me that. All of it works. Frequency medicine works, whether it's a microcurrent or not. But the scanar wave and the sine wave the square wave that they use and so forth is just and I've used it all. Yeah. I'm I like sure you have that's why I'm asking. I like <laughs> microcurrent. But yeah. um but it is faster and it's just smarter is the way to do it. That Russian technology that they came up with that, for that SPUS program, I don't think there's anything out there right now that can touch it. I just don't. In my, my experience of working with all of it, it's the one that still amazes me. And I know it's because of that base 
technology. And the reason why I like the tenant biomodulators, they took the scanner technology and they made it where now yellow, orange, you know there's not enough voltage in that area until you get voltage in that spot, nothing's going to happen. You can do microcurrent all day long until there's not enough voltage. And sometimes it's something else that's blocking it. Then when you're done with the treatment, you're done. It shows. Got voltage negative 25 millivolts. I'm done. It's less thinking too. It's very, yeah. it's very, um, it, it's just faster. It makes the patients, and they love it because they see. They don't just feel it, they're seeing it change. And they go, oh, that was my body. I just changed. That's powerful. Powerful. And don't ever uh, put the, the that patient's, uh, you know, that ability and what they believe. That's the best medicine you've got. Is it expensive? No, the <coughs> biomodulators, I think it's 2250 and that includes four days of training. Oh, wow. That's the least expensive, including training, best device that I've found. You can find Scanar, the, the, the sport units, not the real the Scanar that you're mapping and you're doing, for less, for about 900 But where are you going to get your training right now? I, it, without training, all of these devices are not going to work real well. You really have to have training and understand what they are and why you use them the way you use them. What's the research like for treatment of cancer with the biomedical medicine? Quite a bit, yeah. um, quite a bit. In Russia, um, a lot coming out of there, and even free, in cold lasers. If you get Tina Karu's book, K-A-R-U, she's the leader in cold laser, okay? She's the leader in cold laser, and that, those frequencies that she has used on cancer and so forth, we still use. And with tenant biomodulator, any of these devices you can put in those frequencies. So that's not concise anywhere for you. That is you plowing in like I do through all the research that is there. Also, with the scanner technology, they treat cancer. They use it as treatment, cancer treatments in Europe. Not here. We're not allowed to say the big C word and that we treat anything with it, but yes, in Europe it is utilized. And legally, what can we do here? Pain management. It is FDA cleared for pain management. Okay, so that includes an autonomic nervous system. So, and you know when you balance that ANS, lots of things get better. So you can say for stress, you can say for anxiety, depression, all the psycho-emotional things, but the FDA clearance is for pain management. We'll do some more studies on these kinds of things. The problem is these companies aren't big enough to fund these expensive studies that need to be done here. Mm -hmm. It's that catch-22, but they do have FDA clearance. As far as the physician, you're allowed to use it for pain management. And you, as a physician, can say what you want to with it because you've seen what it works on in other patients. A company can't make any claims except pain, right? Mm -hmm. But physicians know. Two more minutes? Okay. Any more questions? One, two minutes. I'll get into detail when we decide that, you know, it looks like we've got a, a group to be able to do this in very much detail and teach you hands on, let you experience the different units. I have all of them and we'll play and we'll. We'll talk more in detail. Okay. Go for it. Okay. It's good? All right. All right. So I just wanted to say that this is incredible training that um, here we're talking about one of the a leading expert in this field. I can't think of anyone more qualified in teaching this uh, to, to us as students because she's been through this curriculum herself. So she knows personally what our training involves and what else we can gain from it. So I've been privileged to uh, know her as a friend and colleague and be collaborating on some studies with Duke University, et cetera. So I, I can, I'm really encouraging you to consider this program as training here. Thanks. But I get it. I know a Saturday is a Saturday. I get it. Trust me, it's so pretty this time of year. I was going, why did I choose <laughs> But we'll see. Thank you all for attending today, though. Thank you. All right. Thank you.